Now, we live in truly amazing times. The modern civilization we're part of is the most advanced to ever have existed on this planet. But still, about a hundred generations ago, people had bigger brains than ours. Our ancestors were clever and curious, building so many new things and growing their own food, discovering the world around them. Thousands of years ago, they reached a very important milestone in their history. They built the first complex civilizations we now know about. Agriculture started developing sometime between 10,000 and 5,000 years ago. Even though some evidence says people may have started cultivating plants even 23,000 years ago. Civilizations that had machinery and architecture followed very soon. Writing appeared around that time, too. And through time, you'd expect that bigger challenges of civilization would encourage our brain to get bigger, too. But instead, it started to shrink. We've lost a volume that would be equivalent to four ping-pong balls. And some research says that this brain shrinkage started about 3,000 years ago, which is more recent than science used to think. Could it be the rise of technology? Hmm, that doesn't make sense, since technology has helped us become smarter. But also, does being smarter necessarily mean having a bigger brain? It seems human bodies were bigger before as well. But they haven't got small enough for us to blame them for the brain shrinking. So scientists decided to seek inspiration for this dilemma from the tiniest creatures on Earth – ants. I mean, their brain is really, really small – about a third the size of a grain of salt. It only has 250,000 neurons, while our brain contains about 86 million. But still, some ant societies are quite similar to ours. There are ants that are into agriculture, and they grow fungus inside their nests. They go around and gather leaves together with the rest of the plant materials. Then they use all of that on their farms before they harvest their fungus to eat. Scientists compared the brain sizes of different ant species and discovered that, sometimes, those with big societies have larger brains. But here's where the twist happens. When these clever ants become really good at farming fungus, their brains started to shrink. In more complex social systems, each ant gets its own tasks, and its brain doesn't have to worry about anything around them. Maybe, just maybe, the same happened with humans. In the past, the hunter-gatherer lifestyle required many skills, such as foraging, hunting, and making tools. But in our modern society, we specialize in one area and rely on others for many other things in our lives. Also, we once reached the point in our history when our communities became bigger and we shared and stored information outside of our own brains, using writing and books. We're still very different mm -hmm. from ants, so we can't say for sure that we have exactly the same scenario as them. There are lots of theories about brain shrinking, and not every one of them makes sense. Take domestication as an example. Many different animals that have been domesticated, like dogs, have smaller brains than their ancestors that grew in the wilderness. But human self-domestication, as far as research says, started hundreds of thousands of years ago, which is way before our brains started shrinking. Some mention farming that brought many changes to our diet, which is why it became harder to sustain bigger brains. And don't worry, smaller brains don't mean people are now less smart. A big study with lots of people taking part in it showed that brain size and intelligence don't have a strong connection. Some people with smaller brains did really well in IQ tests, and some with bigger brains didn't do well. That's good to know because people used to try to put others in categories of different intelligent levels, considering how big their heads were or which shape they had. So, the fact that our brains have gotten smaller is not the main issue here. Their structure has also changed through time, which is way more important. And think about our brains in the future. When you try to imagine what the world will look like in decades, or even centuries, you often imagine the stuff you're going to have, like flying cars, some new type of cell phone, jetpacks, or something like that. You might even imagine that we'll finally meet some new friends from other planets. But we forget that, as humans, we'll be different, too. We forget that our species was different before. And I mean not just humans, but also our ancient ancestors that resembled apes. 
For example, at some point, they started walking upright, which allowed their hands to be free for different activities, such as making tools, catching food, and generally interacting with objects. It also saved energy. And now, compared to those ancient ancestors, we have a much bigger neocortex. This part of the brain is what sets us apart from other species, because thanks to the neocortex, we can make decisions and form the perspective of this world. Scientists believe our brains have already come pretty close to their maximum capacity when it comes to processing information. If our brains grew bigger, other organs, such as our heart, would grow as well, which could make things in our body kind of complicated. Becoming more intelligent is a tough process, too. To handle more information, the connections in our brain would need to become wider, and that would require more support, like insulation and blood flow. This way, our brains could get bigger, but we'd probably become slower, because messages would need more time to travel through our bodies to the central station. Humanity is a very interesting result of evolution that's probably been happening for about 4 billion years. We started as simple molecules in ancient seas, and eventually ended up as Homo sapiens. Ta-da! Evolution happens when organisms make mistakes while copying their genes. And the trick is, sometimes, these mistakes make them better suited to their environments. But this process doesn't stop with us, it keeps going, and we might be evolving faster than ever. And when you look back at the past, you can make a good guess about our future. We'll become taller, have slightly lighter bodies, and we'll live longer. It was more important to be aggressive in the past to survive, but now we don't need it that much anymore. We'd be like golden retrievers, but less cool and interesting than them. But what will happen to our brains? In the past, evolution was mostly based on the survival of the strongest ones who could adapt to survive. But now, with modern civilization and technology, many of those threats from the past that could destroy some of us are under control. Plus, there's less chance some fierce predator will catch us, which was the case with our ancient ancestors. Evolution hasn't stopped, it just works in a different way. In the future, humans might use genetic engineering to improve the brain or even create some sort of alliance with computers. Some predict that computers could surpass the abilities of our brain pretty soon, by 2030, which means we might integrate computer technology with our minds to become smarter and more capable. This would make us a whole new species, called Homo cyberneticus, with certain changes in the form of silicon pieces such as computer chips. After that, we could go into a whole new age of human evolution by becoming Homo hybridus, which will have an entire computer-based brain and a human body. Again, this could possibly lead to the appearance of a whole new species after that, one we'd call Homo machinus where individuals would be made entirely of silicon, almost like robots. They would have certain advantages compared to us. For instance, they would be immortal and would be able to back up their brains. As our reliance on computers grows, some human qualities, like creativity, could be lost in the translation. So, while our brains might change, we'll have to consider one very important thing. How human will we be able to stay in the future?